Hey guys, welcome to What's Your Build? And in this episode, we have the Italian, but this is not just an arm Italian. This one is the XL, and this is the one that we've extended with the Mojave chassis. In this video, we're gonna go over exactly what we did to this truck, tell you how it handles, what the issues were with putting it together, and all the components that we have in there. This should be a lot of fun, so let's get straight into it and get started. So right out of the gate, let's have a look at it. This here is a factory body, but this one came as a clear body and we put, well, guys, I like bright colors and generally I don't use these on the channel because people like to see the bodies they come with. But this one was a unique car because it's a modified, modified build. So we went ahead and used this one. It is, like I say, a standard Italian body that out of the way. The truck itself has a really good look to it. And if you check out the inside, everything is laid out very nicely and there are some special things that go with it that make it what it is and this video we're definitely going to cover all of that one of the first things you may notice are the tires and these are lp tires these come off of the outcast and these are really aggressive guys these are really aggressive so in the air you have a lot of control nose and tail throttle brakes this will get out of pocket really fast if you have your brakes turned all the way up it can nose dive real hard there's a lot of mass in these tires and we've run these ones we've run the Creighton tires on it and we've run the fire team tires on it and I gotta tell you out of the whole set I do like the Creighton tires on it it's really nice but I think the fire team tires are probably my favorites on this one however these are the ones we run most of the time because in most conditions these really get the job done and even with the longer chassis with these ones on it it'll stand up in a wheelie with no issues so as far as tires go those are your options these are the ones that are on it right now so that's pretty good now i do have a list here of everything so we don't miss nothing because this one here has it has a lot of stuff to it that you wouldn't notice just looking at it right off the bat so first off it is running here let's go over it this way it's running a spectrum 2050 motor in it and that's stock for the 8s or the 6s platform the 8 scale platform that's stock for what arm is putting in their stuff nowadays it does have a blx 185 speed control and i do like this one better than the spectrum 150 i don't know why we've had much better luck with these than we have with the spectrums so that's pretty good down in here you'll notice that we have a 25 kilogram servo these aren't overly expensive and you can find them all day long on eBay. And we use the 25s and 35s in a lot of our different rigs. So this is definitely something we like to have on there. If you take a look on the sides here, look right down in there, you'll notice that this has HR wheel caps on it. So they're not open, these are sealed. It keeps the dirt and debris out of the axle so it makes adjusting when you have to tune on stuff. It keeps the dirt out of there so when you back the grub screw off to take the whole front piece apart, Everything's clean and it comes apart a lot easier. So maintaining cleanliness in those components is a big help to the situation. Moving down a little farther here, this does have a six channel spectrum AVC enabled receiver in it. And we're running this one on a DX3, which really gives this a lot of control as far as you can turn the brakes and the AVC up and down on the fly right on the controller. And I happen to have one right here and this is it so this is pretty cool because it does have the avc and the brake control right there so you can tune them on the fly without getting into any software or anything like that it still has the ability to turn up and down the throttle control from 50 to 75 to 100 percent has your servo reversing right there and it has one button sync control so you push right here the bind button and turn it on this will go into bind mode on the receiver, you push the button and turn it on. This will see that and they will bind just like that. It's really slick the way this works. It feels good in the hand. This is for the RTR radios. This is by far and away my favorite. So while we're inside of this, you'll notice that I've indexed the battery set to the rear. Now, this is a long chassis and it does have, here, let's flip it over this way. It does have dual indexing points for the battery set. So you can set it forward to keep the weight towards the front, or you can set it back more. And that will allow you to index the weight of the battery towards the rear. And on this setup, the, re the battery sits towards the rear of the vehicle. And that does help a lot when you're trying to control 
your trajectory off of the ramp. Um, when it's to the front, this thing does have a tendency to come down nose first. And I gotta tell you, the fire team suffers from that too. It does have a much heavier body on the fire team. And it does have a real bad habit of nose diving. On this one, we set everything back some and it doesn't suffer from that issue. So that is really nice. Now, to get the stock bodies to fit, because we did stretch this out and it's all of an inch and a half, inch and three quarters longer because we went from the standard chassis to the Mojave chassis, which is this one. And the difference being about that much in length. And that is a pretty big difference when you really look at it. Now, this is an EXB Mojave chassis on this and it works really well. I'm really happy with it, but in order to do this, you do need to get certain components that are gonna make it all come together. The one that you have to manufacture yourself, at least that we're aware of, are these two plastic blocks right here. And these nylon blocks, it's a material that we use where I work, and so I had some remnants and I used it, but this is just basically a plastic block and it's been modified to move the body posts from here to here to allow it to take any stock body, and this is just stock Italian body, put it on there and it fits exactly the way it should. Notice the gap here. That's how much longer that chassis is and that makes a pretty big difference when you're thinking about it. So you're gonna have to, unless you wanna custom build your bodies to fit, you're gonna have to do an extension of this type. And if you wanna know how that's done, check out the build video for this one. There will be a link in the description down below as for how that's done so you can do this for yourself. And the same thing will apply to the XL Cratons and so forth. So this is basically the same build. Now the difference being, the Italian has smaller outdrive hub carriers and they're narrower. They basically, this one has the Typhon hub carriers on the Creighton arms. So the arms are wider like the Creighton, but it has the hubs from the Typhon on it. And that's what keeps it kind of narrower. And it makes it, it's got the smaller shock, uh, the shock tower up front. And that keeps everything small and close to the ground. This is the speed demon out of the group. so. Out of the box, this is supposed to be capable of 70 miles an hour, and I believe it with the stock tires on it, which we don't run the stock tires for this, but with the stock tires on it, it is really quick, and it does keep the front end down because there's not a lot of mass in those tires. These have, these are the opposite end of the spectrum. There's a lot of mass, so the more you pin it, the more it wants to stand. With the stock tires that come with it, that's not an issue, and you can really fly with one of these. I really am a fan of the wing that's on it, but the wing does have the RPM arms on it. So now it's got the flexible RPM wing mounts, which prevents it from damaging the internals when you do jump and cartwheel. On the tail here, you'll notice it has a wheelie bar and this, unfortunately guys, they don't make this wheelie bar anymore. This is a T-bone racing wheelie bar for a Creighton 6S. And I bought several of these and I was online the day they shut their service down. TBR is done, so you can't get these anymore, but by far and away, the best wheelie bar you could get for this situation. It really does a great job, and there are a couple of tricks to putting them on, but that's not a thing anymore since you can't get them. On the front, we are using, now they make an EXB bumper for the, for the Italian, but I like the Creighton one better, and here's why. Take a look across the front here. Right here, the bumper sticks out as far as the tires, so it makes a lot better contact when you run into things here as opposed to the smaller one which hits tires first which puts a lot of load on the arms. Now since we mentioned the arms here, take a look here, this has the version 4 RPM arms all the way around it and guys I am a huge fan of these because these are limber, they're really flexible and they'll take a huge impact and bend and come back and they won't be broken, whereas the stock ones have a tendency to break. Also inside of here, and I'll get you a good close look at this, but inside here we have HR aluminum hub carriers in the front because those pillar balls have a tendency to pull out and when they do that, it cracks that housing. Well, with the aluminum ones, that solves that problem. And the way we look at things on this type of vehicle is you want strong at the wheel hubs, like strong at the wheel hubs. You want flexible at the arms and strong on the internals. So the arms take up 
all of the impact when you have something, you land a little askew, the arms will absorb that. That's how we look at it here. And it seems to serve us well doing it that way. So when we run it this way, we like the bigger, the bigger, gnarlier, really good hub carriers out front because those protect all of that. The arms take up the extra impact and the internals don't suffer nearly as badly. If you take a huge impact here, the arms will absorb a lot of it and it won't transfer as much power to the hinge pins, which means in the long run, your car is going to hold up better. Now, if we jump back to the inside of the vehicle here for a second, you'll notice we've got aluminum center braces front and rear. These are GPMs and they work really well. You definitely want to have some of these in there because the plastic ones, they just don't seem to do the job. And on the top center brace, we have HR aluminum ends for it. We've never broken a plastic one, but those are really cool and we use them anyway. So that's just what we have in there. The gearing on this thing is stock. So we haven't had to gear it up. It has the original gearing that these come with. So we do have the, we do have the Italian in the EXB version. It's still short. We didn't stretch that one, but we matched everything up to be similar. We do have an aluminum brace here for the servo. So that's a GPM product as well. And that keeps things from flexing when you go to turn your wheels and whatnot. Everything is fixed nice and tight to the chassis. So that's pretty much what we have in there, guys. This is a blast to play with. It is way more stable now that it's got the Mojave chassis on it. And I couldn't be happier. So hey guys, for those of you that made it all the way to the end, we've compiled a little compilation of our favorite moments with this particular truck. Check this out.
So guys, this is where I usually ask you to subscribe, like, and share, and all that cool stuff. But in this video, we're just gonna ask you to bash that like button. You know, if you learned anything, if you like what we go through here at the channel to try and create this content that can be helpful, hit the like button because that helps our content spread to others in a better way. If you feel like you wanna subscribe, please feel free to do so. But that like button does more than you possibly could know. If you guys have Italian and you've done something really cool to it or something you did to it that didn't work so well, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studio saying, keep bashing guys. Ah!